Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing with the Serendipity series of books. I said a lot about Serendipity last time, so you can listen to that mini rant and debate on the first Serendipity video, which was Flutterby. But today we are looking at Flutterby Fly, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. You will pretty much hear those names every single time we do a serendipity book. And looking at this cover, it looks like Flutterby's grown up a little bit. Those butterflies look much smaller than her. And as usual, dedication. Oh, my copy's a second printing. Hmm. July 1984. And just to prove my point from last time, serendipity and the pink dragon. Oh. Showing Lux something in the fine print. Dedicated to the memory of the real Flutterby. She died too soon, ever to be able to fly. Stephen. Oh, heavy stuff. These books do deal with some serious topics. Beyond the farthest mountain, in a place where the feathery wisps of mist begin to call themselves clouds, there is a long, winding valley called Wingsong. The lush trees of the valley seem to dance with blossoms, and the leaves seem to flutter in the gentle breezes that sighed as they reached up and touched the sky. The trees appeared to lose all their leaves as a breeze wrapped itself around the rocks and trees alike and then lifted itself towards the warming sun. But appearances can be deceiving, for the leaves were really butterflies, millions and millions of butterflies that flittered and fluttered about the valley in search of memories of a long lost time. For it was here in the Valley of Wingsong that all the butterflies we chased when we were young came when summer's warmth turned to winter's cold. It took me a while to really see this illustration part here, because I could see some of this, but I couldn't see the rest of the butterflies come through the grass area because they blended in a lot. I saw them clearly in the forested area of the picture. Yeah, they blend a bit more drawn over the grassy area because it's a breeze full of butterflies. They flew to wing song on gentle fall breezes and then gathered together in flights of a hundred or more. Once in wing song, they were, forevermore, softly herded from one spot to the next by small winged horses. The tiny horses would flap their wings faster than a hummingbird and swiftly fly from one end of a flight of butterflies to the other to ensure that no one got lost. Hmm. Now we get the horse's introduction. Yes, but we seem to have multiples, where mm -hmm. before we only had one. One such small winged horse was named Flutterby, and oh how she could fly! She would dip and soar on the smallest of breezes, watching for one laughing butterfly who would try to flap away from the flight on a tiny giggle of wind. As one would try to slip away to who knows what adventure, Flutterby, with a kick of her crystal heels, would swoop quickly around and guide the silly butterfly back to its own flight. Very lovely illustration there. So different from how she was drawn in the other book. Yes, it seems like she's grown up a bit. You know, she had just hatched in the first book. Mm -hmm. Also, there are other winged horses around, though we still are dealing with butterflies. Mm -hmm. So, there might be a little bit of uh, cannon breaking. Mm. One day, as Flutterby was guiding her flight through a grove of clover rose, she began to hear the butterflies whispering to one another. The whispering got louder and louder, and all of their wings started beating against the rhythm of the winds. One minute, the butterflies were in organized flight, a giant puff of shimmering color floating through the air. The next minute, they were flying in a hundred different directions. It was like a rainbow's explosion as they went this way and that. Flutterby flew as she was trained, around and around, whinnying soft and gentle sounds to the butterflies as they began to slow down. I wonder if there's a book in between Flutterby and this one. Hmm. That explains how she came to wing song and why there's now more tiny horses. Also, why in this book the butterfly is large enough that it just whispers in her ear. Instead of staying right next to her. Yes, as it did in the first book. As we know she was small enough to get stuck in an ant hill and a beehive. 
Mm-hmm. And she's not much larger than the wise old butterfly she spoke to in mm-hmm. the first book. None of which I noticed when I was a kid. Ah. But when you're an adult, you're more about the continuity of things. Trust me, I spent time organizing these as a kid, trying to figure out the proper order. And wondering if all the Morgans were the same Morgan and all the princesses were the same princess. Ah. Uh-huh. When the flight was calm and together again, Flutterby flew to the point and asked the butterflies, Why? Why did you suddenly fly all over the sky? The butterflies were still a bit skitterish, but finally one of them answered, Because of the words we heard dancing on the wind. Flutterby couldn't believe that a few words could cause such a panic. What words? she asked patiently. Well, one of the butterflies said in a gossipy tone, this is what we heard. Ugly, ugly butterfly, fly away or you shall die. Flutterby reared back in shock. Who would say such a thing? The butterfly paused and then said, I shouldn't tell you, for it was a secret. But it was the old black raven that flies in the wood. Hmm, interesting. Flutterby settled her butterflies on a lilac bush and then went off in search of the old black raven that flies in the wood. She didn't have to go far, for within a hundred beats of her wings she found the old black raven sitting in a cherry tree, spitting pits. Flutterby was furious, but she held her temper and through clenched jaws said, Did you tell the butterflies, ugly, ugly butterfly, fly away or you shall die? No, called the raven. They must have misunderstood me, or perhaps the wind took away part of the words. I told the butterflies exactly what I had heard. Don't sigh, butterfly. Fly away or you shall cry. Hmm. A game of telephone. Yes. So it seems. Who would say such a thing? Flutterby asked. Well, crowed the raven in a gossipy whisper. It was a secret and I promised not to tell. But it was that chubby chipmunk that lives in the tall oak tree that grows at the edge of the woods. Flutterby fluttered her wings in anger and then flew just as fast as she could to the tall oak tree the raven had described. Well, she and the raven seem very much of a size. Mm-hmm. Maybe she's more of the size of a bird in this one. A rather large bird. Ravens are rather yeah. formidable. She soared high above the tree and flew around and around until she spied the chipmunk sitting on his haunches at the edge of a branch. It was chattering away just as loud as it could please to anyone and everyone who would listen. Very nicely drawn, chipmunk. Mm -hmm. Flutterby fluttered down and in a stern voice asked, Are you the gossipy chipmunk who told the raven, Don't sigh, butterfly, fly away or you shall cry? And then the raven told the butterflies, Ugly, ugly, butterfly, fly away or you shall die? Heavens to Betsy, no, chattered the chipmunk. I don't know how that raven misunderstood me because I told him exactly what I had heard. Better fly, butterfly. Fly away and don't you lie. Who would say such a thing? asked Flutterby. Well, said the chipmunk in a conspiratorial tone. Yes, the word conspiratorial is in a children's book. I wasn't going to tell anybody, but it was the old monarch butterfly that lives at the base of this very tree. An old monarch butterfly. Hmm. And Flutterby is larger than a chipmunk. Yep. Flutterby snorted, stomped her foot in anger, and then stepped off the branch and flew around and around the tree until she came to a gnarled branch nearly at the base. There, sitting in a shaft of golden sunlight, was an ancient monarch butterfly, waving his tattered wings against a warm summer breeze. Flutterby landed, and after scraping her hooves against the bark of the tree, asked, Are you the butterfly that told the chipmunk, Better fly, butterfly, fly away and don't you lie? The chipmunk who told the raven, Don't sigh, butterfly, fly away or you shall cry? The raven who told the butterflies, Ugly, ugly, butterfly, fly away or you shall die? I don't think she needs to repeat all of them. No, but it's rather fun to run through the litany. The old butterfly flapped his wings and twisted his antennae this way and that, tasting the light and gentle breeze. Not I, he said in a deep, rich voice, but I do speak to all the new, young butterflies that come to Wingsong. As they touch their very first scented wind, I always tell them, Fly so high, little butterfly, 
fly away and touch the sky. Gossips, snorted Flutterby, as she thanked the old butterfly and went back to her flight at the end of the valley. I'd like to know where the butterfly got glasses. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like the old man. Mm-hmm. I know he's supposed to be an ancient one, but, you know. Mm-hmm. Glasses are a nice touch. She circled the flight and finally went to the very center and said, Listen, little butterflies, there is nothing to fear. What you heard before was only gossip, only lies. All the butterflies nodded their antennae in simple understanding as Flutterby guided them once again on the wings of their journey. But far, far in the back of the pack, voices could be heard. What did she say? I couldn't hear that well. Something about worship and size? What did you say? I heard the same thing, said another in a gossipy tone. Flutterby was beat with a horsewhip and nearly died. Okay. This is a children's book, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I'd like to know how butterflies know what a horsewhip is. Hmm. Ouch. A little, yeah. Also, this is a very pretty picture. Yes, it is. There's a uh, modern fantasy artist who has headshots similar to this of unicorns surrounded by butterflies. When I saw theirs, it reminded me of this book. Uh -huh. Oh, that is a nice picture, though it looks a little bit desaturated compared to the other ones. Yeah, the colors aren't quite as rich here, but that may just be the aging of my book. Mm -hmm. Well, you always do a marvelous job of taking care of your books. Yes, but unfortunately the box that this book and many of the others we've been reading through were in was accidentally left at my parents and exposed to some water damage. Mm. So, for the ending rhyme, if you want to gossip, and it's an easy thing to do, gossip to a butterfly. The story will come out untrue. Not the most practical of the ending rhymes. It's just such a nice definition on the horse's body. Yeah, but Robin James' illustrations are just beautiful. So, very fun and good lesson. Don't take things at face value. Don't let words phase you. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully. Pay attention. So, yeah. These... Go to the source. Mm hmm Don't get freaked out over nothing. Mm hmm So, this has been Flutter by Fly, written by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Robin James. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, comment, subscribe, etc. Check out other videos in the Embers Reading Room catalog. I'm getting quite a few up there now. You can also check out other videos on the Lux Analysis channel. Mostly not about books, but hopefully still interesting to you. If you'd like to support this channel, there are links for Amazon and Ebates, which Ebates will provide you with rebates for cash back. Amazon, you're probably already familiar with. It just will happen to get a little kickback if you use those links. If you'd like to uh, throw something directly our way, uh, there is both a Patreon and a Ko-fi under Lux's name. Thank you again for listening.